All right, so why don't we call the order at 505? Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Our first order of business I see is public comment. Uh, as a reminder, since we are in hybrid meeting, we always offer the option of in person comment first. Um, and then we will then open up to any of our attendees online to provide comment as well. Uh, if you are online, um, directions follow as for our other meetings. You can certainly raise your hand, let us know if you'd like to provide comment. and. Uh, Devin will make sure you can unmute. If you can provide your comment, please remember to provide a name and address prior to speaking. So at this time, I will open it up for in person public comment. All right, we're all set there. So, Devin, anybody online? Uh, see no hands, but one more second. We're all set. Okay. All right. Thank you. Next order of business is minutes. Uh, so, could I get a motion to approve the attached March 30th, 2022 minutes? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next order of business is correspondence. Uh, so this is correspondence received 329 uh, 2022 through 425 2022. You can see there are a number of comments um, that we did receive. These were all received via the comment form um, or the contact form online. Um, so they were all included in your agenda packet, have all been responded to um, at this time. We want to make sure the committee um, and anybody referring to our agenda saw those comments and um, took those into account, account as we move forward in our conversations. Um, just to, I always remind uh, everybody as well to, to uh, the people that are attending or listening to our meetings after the fact, please always remember if you cannot be with us in person to provide comment, that is a great opportunity as you can see other community members have utilized that form on our website. At the very bottom of it, please um, take out any ask questions at, look for clarification on items, anything that you want to find out from the building committee, um, please, by all means, reach out to us in that way and we'll get back to you in a timely fashion with uh, a very thorough answer. So um, just an important way to stay um, in touch with us uh, and make sure that the community stays engaged. So always a reminder to make sure you use that form when you can. All right, so we are then going to go into reports. Um, that's quite a few to go through tonight, and uh, some of them are going to be abbreviated. You'll see this is a large topic of conversation for value engineering that you'll see as a separate agenda item. So I just kind of wanted to lay that out there for everybody to keep in mind. But from a chair report perspective, I do want to take an opportunity to, first of all, um, express my gratitude, my thank you on behalf of the entire building committee uh, to our professional partners, to our working group. All the design work that's been taking place has been really, uh, really excellent work. A lot of great conversations going on. This is not easy uh, for anybody to have these conversations and walk through. We are really asking uh, for a lot of flexibility in some of the conversations that we're having moving forward and kind of a, a forward look um, and impacts to this project. So I wanted to make sure that um, it is understood how much that's appreciated. Uh, from us and that it, we understand that um, you know, it is a lot of work, a lot of decisions being made um, and a lot of give and take in conversations and it's acknowledged and, and really appreciated. So um, to everybody on the building committee, I say thank you and I know the building committee says thank you to our professional partners as well. So we appreciate that partnership. Um, that's kind of what I wanted to say tonight for chair report, just as a reminder, you know, we, this is a lot of work. A lot, of, a lot of effort from everybody. So we will move right into additional reports. Uh, so town council liaison report, Johnny. Uh, so town council met last night um, and 
had consideration for special topics and we covered the survey. So we had a, a presentation from uh, the Center of Research and Public Policy uh, on the 1928 building and, and also uh, some questions that were given out. As you know, when I spoke at the last meeting that we had a, a, a survey that was done, we had close to a thousand respondents of 97, which only a few were discounted for not being able to vote in Farmington, et cetera. Um, they give a presentation and kind of uh, laid out all the numbers on the potential support um, for the 1928 with or without Harbor funds, um, support for additional uses for some of the older areas like the gyms, the 1952, the 64, uh, et cetera, with and without Harbor funds. It was very open-ended, uh, but more of a, a, a survey to get the pulse of the town. Uh, the town council felt that this, this survey was needed in order to see if there was even an appetite for something like this in town before we gear up with building committees and all that stuff. Um, I, I suggest everybody go look at it. It's very interesting. Uh, there was some correlation made between uh, this survey and the survey that was done uh, previous to going out for referendum on the high school. Yesterday, we voted to uh, approve um, the uh, ad hoc committee for the 1928 recommendations for future use. We also approved the statement of needs. Uh, at the following meeting, we'll be looking at the charge of the committee. Um, I do want to take just a second to be very clear because um, some of the comments that I've heard, not necessarily yesterday at the council meeting, but just in general, uh, and then I made the mistake of trolling Facebook to see what other comments are out there, and I, and I mistake. Um, but I, I do feel like there, I, I want to just take 30 seconds to clear some of the misinformation that's out there and just be you know, very direct in saying that the high school project that has nothing to do with what we're talking about potentially in the 1928. This is, and as, as I've been sitting with you guys for the last three something years or whatever, um, you know, this has been a project all on its own. There's never been any discussion about what's going on other than, you know, separating the 1928 building from the project before referendum. And we've tried to be very, very clear about that. Now that we have the high school project moving along, um, we're looking at if there's potential uses. And this committee that we're putting together is no, is no endorsement by any means of what direction the town or the town council or eventually the, the people of Farmington will vote on a referendum of, of a project in the future. So this is strictly to find the information, go out, hire an architect, hire an estimator, see what some high level uses and costs could be, and then come back with a recommendation for a referendum down, uh, you know, if that in, I think either April, May of next year. The work over the next year is going to be just to gather this information and try to do it. What I wanna make sure is that between the building committee here and the building committee there, hence the confusion, um, that the high school project or the central office project is completely separate from anything that may or may not happen on that. Um, and then I just want to touch on one other thing and, and you know, hopefully people understand this is, you know, there's a lot of correlations being made about how, you know, these old buildings, if they're still good to use, why didn't we use them? And I don't need to rehash it here. There's three and a half years of records and, and Zoom meetings and calls and, and documents of exactly why we made the decisions that were made at the time and why Farming the residents voted to have this this uh, this new school project go through. What we're talking about potential uses again. Its potential is a is a one hundred percent different from what we were looking at from the eyes of a programmatic needs and what the high school or the high school community would need. Uh, that being said, I'll, I'll give regular updates as they go. There will be a, a building committee uh, potentially put together. It's not official yet because we're going to do another meeting for the charge. Uh, uh, to start digging into this. And as I made the comment last night um, that at the end of this 1928 building committee, it may be a recommendation to do absolutely nothing. It may be a recommendation to keep partial. It may be a recommendation to keep more and look into the future. But as anybody who knows me, there's always a cost benefit to everything that we do. And we wanna make sure that that is 
uh, communicated uh, correctly from that end. So I'll try to be very clear in anything I say, whether it's high school building committee or 1928, which, uh, you know, we don't know who that makeup will be yet anyways. But that being said, just to make sure it's very clear that people understand there's loads of information on the FSH building project or, uh, dot org that has everything that you need to know about the high school. And as the committee starts to function, they'll be their own mechanism to get the information out clearly. That's it. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions for Jeremy on that? And that's more to come. Thank you. Uh, we'll go to the Board of Education liaison for everyone to anything in addition. Nothing specific. All right, so then we will go to uh, report number four, owner's rep report. Uh, sure, so um, just briefly a couple items. One uh, thing uh, we did so in our last meeting, we presented that we were getting ready to uh, have a few meetings with the state. Uh, one is a uh, PCR meeting and then uh, a design development review meeting of the entire project. The PCR is the, uh, the meeting for our enabling plan um, or vice versa, sorry. And so the enabling is that phase one plan we talked about at, at that last meeting that we're getting ready to prepare for. Uh, we had those lengthy three three hour meetings with the state. Um, they requested information back from us. Uh, uh, at the same time, or just before that, we presented to the uh, board bed. So we did have a, an opportunity to present the project there. Uh, that was uh, to move forward that phase one enabling plan to move forward and from the state to um, support for that phase one enabling plan. So uh, Laura will talk a little bit more about where we are. Uh, with the bidding process uh, and, and what's to come. But uh, I just wanted to report on those two things before we get into some items further down in the, in the list of, of the agenda. So. Any questions for Mark? Big accomplishment that we should gloss over the fact that we went up to bid. So that's a uh, big part of our process that's not so for us. So. Yeah, More to come. It'll be interesting to see when we get back. That's right. Uh, we'll see what, what comes back on those bids, and we'll have an opportunity to review them and um, identify next steps for moving forward. Excellent. All right, great. Thank you. Um, all right, we'll move on to architect report. Yes, good evening, everyone. Um, as you probably already know, uh, all projects are undergoing a cost escalation for various reasons. Our high school project is no different. Uh, and so when we received the uh, design development cost estimate from OEG, it was higher than the budget. Uh, we all know that. And so there were many sessions with the work group, uh, with the construction manager, with our consultants to try to bring that cost down. And I believe later you'll be having that uh, discussion about how we achieve that. But it was uh, a joint effort among everybody. Uh, so thanks to OEG, CSG uh, for that help. Uh, we do have a project to build, and the next step for us is to finish uh, the plans and specs, the working drawings, or CDs, the construction documents, as they're referred to commonly. Um, uh, my estimate right now, we're about the 40-45% completion of that phase. Um, we do have to deliver in May, on May 20th, the goal of giving to OMG the pricing set. And uh, the pricing set is the status of the construction documents at that time. And it's the nature of this work that some um, consultants' documents will be almost 100% done, like the site packages. And some will be less than that. Some will be 50% done. Some will be 80% done. But as the blended average, we're hoping that we identify all of the scope, that we clearly identify all of the alternates, so when the pricing set is delivered, OMG has clear uh, direction on the scope of work. Uh, and we're making good progress. I'm on the phone every day with our sub-consultants, making sure that we're keeping on pace. That's really all I need to report this evening. Any questions? Yes. 
Uh, just a quick question, um, and more just to uh, make sure it's clear. A lot of comments I've received is, you know, worrying about cost escalation, especially for the residents of Farmington and, you know, that prohibiting the project from going forward. Uh, can you just give us a 30 second overview of, you know, about what we're going to dive into tonight, but just for the people that are on the meeting now and are going to hang around for all the details of how that process works and is it pretty typical and do you run into this and have you built in some, and then maybe OMG can jump in on that too, but have you built in contingencies and, and, and if we are over budget, then what's that process? Sure. So contingencies is one strategy when you get into a cost um, management process. And so there are contingencies built into this thing, into this budget, uh, ONG can talk about that. Uh, we actually had some disagreement about the contingencies. And ONG, I think, is uh, recommending a higher contingency than I would recommend at this stage, but they are the professionals. And so we are relying on ONG's contingency fund to cover any possible uh, overages. That's one strategy. Another strategy is to prepare some bid alternates. And so I think later this evening, you will be going through that list of bid alternates. These are some alternative ways of uh, building components of the project. Concrete masonry block instead of uh, drywall, for example. They both function as partitions. Uh, separating spaces on the interior. Uh, it's just a different way to build those partitions. And so we have built in one of the alternates is um, the chip uh, partitions in certain locations with durable wall covering in lieu of masonry partitions. That's an alternate. If bids are favorable uh, on bid date, um, then the committee will have to make a decision whether they want to accept that bad alternate or not. And I think we have a total of eight or nine alternates that we've identified. Again, this is normal. Well, we're experiencing this on other projects that we've received uh, cost estimates recently. And, and so this is the process that we're going through right now. Thank you. We'll talk actually a little bit more about that communication as well. Yeah, we can kind of circle back around with how we can actually help support Okay, perfect. Yeah, that was helpful. Thank you. Any other questions or thoughts? Yep, yeah, Meg, this is Michael. I just have a follow-up question to um, Richard's explanation of kind of where we're at and how we might mitigate that. Um, it might be helpful. It's, it's certainly how we have been managing thus far um, to identify either some value engineering items or some um, alternates that might be um, added if the if the if the resources were there, uh, but taking them out of the the full scope of the project now, I I just wonder to the 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 magnitude of of um, how far that can be tested either with um, existing contingencies or other things. Given that we're as you say we're about um, fifty percent of the way there. Um, not not the right way to characterize it, but we're 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 getting close to the construction documents, and then at that point in time, we're getting to a process where we move outside of the internal cost estimation, and we're bringing the bids out to the different um, subcontractors, and and we may have bigger variances. It would be helpful to know. Not, doesn't have to be something that you you answer now, Richard, but. It would be helpful to have a clear strategy of where does um, where are we outstripped in our ability to really continue to mitigate through the strategies that you've identified, and um, that that would just be helpful as a resource to understand. Again, not not tonight, and you're not prepared for that, but um, I, are, would it be unreasonable that we potentially have? Um, additional items that we need to be going back in and, and reducing from the budget as we continue to move forward that may be in the same magnitude of the ones that we have done twice now through value engineering. Okay, um, I'll answer it partially and I think I'll probably have to come back to you with a more 
uh, thorough response. Um, I feel good about where we are. I think, I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but you'll say it differently if you feel differently. I hope ONG feels good about where we are. Um, our role is to make sure that you get a good quality building, that we deliver the program that was approved by the Board of Education. That program uh, has not been affected except for one outdoor facility feature that we'll discuss later today. That is something that uh, is being identified as an alternate. So the interior of the building, the scope of the interior, the number of spaces is the same as what we had previously uh, planned. Um, the mechanical systems are the same. Uh, so all of those features are intact. We have, we had during our value management discussions, looking at the amount of glazing, we have reduced the amount of glazing in our strategy, but not to the point where it hurts the building or the interior. We're reducing the amount of skylights. That was an item that was suggested by ONG. And so we've done that. Um, and it doesn't affect the daylight that we have promised we wanted to get into the floor of the building. We don't want to eliminate that. Now, if you're asking me, how do we know what we're going to call it quits? I, I, I think we're far from that. I, I really do, Michael. So I, I feel confident where we are. I think ONG is, feels confident as well. Uh, we're, we're very far from calling it quits. Yeah, and, and, and for the record, Richard, I do think that um, I, I would echo what you have shared that those in the working group have, have um, understood that compromise is what we've been focused on and that the, the um, items that have been identified to be um, substituted in the project have, have a rational basis for them. I guess what I'm just trying to figure out is, you know, we're not, we're not at the end and as we get closer to that, you know, what, are the, what other additional levers might there be for us um, outside of the community? And that's what I'm saying, that, that's not an answer now. Michael, you're fading away. You're fading away. Sorry, I think that's one of those things that we might need to, you know, continue to keep our focus on as we move forward. Right, right. I would just add to um, the working group has also identified items that are still pending and being investigated and worked through, right? So there is another list of items that we've been talking about that we haven't, um, you know, completely rejected and haven't completely approved. And maybe we don't need to go down that pending list, but um, those are, that work continues. So there are some things and then Richard, I may have missed it if you identified escalation uh, as another strategy that we went through right so we've changed our escalation points uh, through the through the process good one so when we started i believe we were at a four percent annual es escalation rate i think ONG is now uh recommending an annual escalation rate of eight percent so that shows a more conservative approach uh, and i don't disagree with that strategy it shows a more conservative approach to budget and budget so given the dollars that increase, right, are, right. are increase the cost and therefore having to find things to balance with so that we're, we're right. strategizing with escalation. And, and this is a, a, a consequence of the situation that we're all in right now. I mean, the procurement is more difficult. There's a war on now with gas prices being increased. This is, this is just the circumstance. And so the, all of these strategies are a reaction the circumstances that we find ourselves in. Right. Thank you. Uh, all right, we'll move on to uh, communication subcommittee report. Oh, I'm so far away. I'm so far away. I put a check mark. I know, I didn't even know you are so far away, right? I put a check mark by it, and it was, I'm so sorry. My fault completely. I'm sorry, Laura. Construction manager report. All right. Um. So we're off to bid for phase one. Um, as Michael had referred, um, 
we went up to the state, we got our, our approval letters, so we're out to bid. We have an on site pre bid meeting next Tuesday, May 3rd at 3 30. Um, you don't need to, nobody needs to show up, we're just going to show the contract in the ground. <clears throat> so that's being organized. Um, as was mentioned, we've been working on the pricing. Um, we have done our completed our review of the design development set. We had at the last time, our last meeting, we said we were finishing our review. We have since passed those comments on to the design team. We do like a clash detection of the model, so we've given our review comments on that. Um, and then it's, we've also placed newspaper ads. So uh, as we're out to bid, an ad needs to be placed in Harper Current as well as a minority publication. So we've done that. And then to kind of run through the schedule, um, we remain on schedule as of now. Um, and just a, I did a horrible color this, this time. I did yellow instead of the green. So it doesn't really show up too swell, but just to highlight um, the look ahead, the red line represents where we are as of today. And there's a highlight just through May of what's up and coming. So again, we went out to bid. We started on Monday, this past Monday. Uh, still working on the CM contract approval and the two uh, executive sessions that you guys are going to, or the executive session for the two contracts, hopefully will get resolved tonight. You will need these uh, consultant services pretty soon, within the next month. We're going to be looking to have these reviews start, so we only have so much time to, to be kicking that can down the road because we are going to need this. This is critical to our next phase, our going up to the state for the next phase, so especially the local review aspect of it. Um, towards the uh, just up and coming, um, I'll be working on what's called a GMP. So once we get the bids in for this phase one, um, ONG will put together a little cost summary uh, based on where the bids are, our costs, uh, a schedule, and anything else. It'll be a little like mini document and we'll be looking for that approval. Um, I have it prepared sometime coming up. So just to be on the lookout for that, early June, we're gonna want you to approve that, meet and approve that, tell us to go. It does take about three weeks, two and a half to three weeks to get a contractor on site from the minute we get, you know, notice to proceed. So you guys have to approve, we have to give a letter, we have to write the contract, bonds, insurance. So it all takes time, it's not that. You go and we show up the next day. So just bear that in mind with our July, um, our July start date. You know, there's all these things that come into play before that. Uh, next page now. What else is there? Uh, so as, um, as Rich met, Richard mentioned, we are going to be coming in with this phase two. We're still working on the construction documents. We've got through our whole um, state approval process, tracking that. At some point, you're going to need to revisit your ed specs. I, I have it probably too soon again. I keep kind of pushing it away, but don't forget, you're going to have to revisit your ed specs and improve your guys' ed specs. And then we've got this mf and IT programming just as a start. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, we're moving towards the, you know, the, the continuation of the construction documents and roll it down a little bit more. I've got our regulatory approvals on here as well. Oh, no, next page. <laughs> All right, so OSTA review, um, you know, we did get our application in, so that's an ongoing item. Um, I haven't seen I haven't seen any sort of comments or uh, questions come back yet, so I'm not sure where we are in that process. But we're tagging that. We put our flood management certification in, and I know that there's a technical issue on the stormwater general permit application. That's something that we're tracking as well. We're right on the cusp of the start of that. Um, there's an issue with DEP's website. Like people can't upload the application, so there's some technical issue that's going on. So it's a very it's a very defined review period that they have before you're allowed to start work on site. So this is something that, so these three are all pretty much, you know, front and center. We're trying to keep an eye on those. And again, just our bidding schedule, we're out to bid. Oh, right now the bids are due May 17th, if I didn't say that before. We'll be scoping and then making a recommendation. So this is what's up and coming over the next month. That's all I had. Question, Laurel. Um, could you repeat the time of that uh, pre-construction site meeting next week? Oh, I didn't say it. I'll think. So the time is 3.30. Okay. It's next Tuesday. And who will attend that meeting? Um, I've asked SLR to be there. 
Okay. And that's if you're the, seeing it, that's the site account. engineer at the site plan. Yeah, it's mostly site work. So I want to make sure they were going to be there and they're, they all confirmed they're going to be there. I don't know if you and Michael are going to be there. It's up to you if you want to go. I'll put it on my calendar and I hope to be there, but I'm in the process of finishing the CBA. Oh, well, that's, you know, <laughs> okay. it, not for nothing, but those guys can, yeah, they can, can take it. care of it. And um, it's non mandatory. Um, so we don't know who's going to show up. We've got quite a bit of interest. A lot of site contractors are keeping an eye on this one as well as the Warrington project. So they're all aware of it. Um, yes, so Sam reached out to Scott and Denise is it, um, for, for a room to assign, so if you help with uh, that's I'll reach back out to him today. But I, it's not a big deal. We could put a sign up at the front door to direct sure. people. It's not a big deal. We just need a place to uh, congregate. And, and contractors tend to show up early and want to walk around on their own, so you know, probably around three they might start to show up. Before a meeting, uh, we, we can. Well, I guess to do that. Just to say, we don't want you lurking around the school. Yeah. Well, it's after school, right? Three o'clock is after school. Yeah, that that's correct, Mark. We're gonna we're gonna look at a good location near the entrance there for everybody. So Denise will be back in touch with you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It's after school, but we'll still have students in the building for activities but uh we'll have everybody gather at the front and we'll go from there so any other questions from all comments thoughts i mean i would only i need um uh, idea of ad spec approval it takes two readings and two board of education meetings to update the ad spec so the timing of that, I have two more board meetings for this year. We can certainly do special board meetings, but we start to get into vacations of either administrators or board members. It's hard to get a forum in the summer. So I'm just say that's probably the important but I feel time. We don't need it for PCR, right? We don't look for them. Just don't want it. It's a, your ed specs have to match everything. So it could be it could be done at any time. If they're not going to change now, it's probably better to just get them approved now, get them out of the way. Yes. Yeah. So there might be some programming, some footage things in the classroom size things. And right, right, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably showing it too early, early, but still, it is coming into that time frame where we're trying to finish documents and, and all that. So if if not before the summer, I mean at least in the fall, right, right, whatever. You don't want yeah, to we should it. probably have it. We should at least have the, should have the first reading before the PCR. The PCR. Which is June, end of June, right? End of June. End of June, which is before school gets out. <laughs> so, yeah, unfortunately, well, I think the timing of it's just landing on it. And so, Kathy, we can sort of talk offline and figure out what, sure. what we're yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. I can't believe I almost skipped that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we can go on to communication stuff again. Um, do you want to take a slip at that? Yeah. 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 All right. So we did have a uh, communication subcommittee meeting just prior to this meeting. Tonight we had a couple um, items on our agenda. The first was uh, Website updates. Uh, the main topic of conversation around website updates was um, going back to your your conversation question, Johnny, about um, giving kind of a financial summary and an explanation that we could add to the website for community members and as a resource for us and anybody who's actually out in the community. If we get a question, having a place to direct uh, people to to really get a good, solid answer on um, the practices that we are. Executing on here to make sure we are understanding our costs and keeping those in alignment. So, I don't know if you want to just kind of a quick overview of the plan. Yeah, so we've been getting a lot of questions, some through the website, we've been seeing some online just about, you know, what are we doing to deal with escalation and inflation and the cost of goods and everything. And as, as we're all well, well aware of, because we've already done it before, is we've updated our budget. We've had of different phases after schematic design, now after design development, and they're based on current market conditions. So we have a better snapshot of what we're dealing with. And, and we've completed 
the value engineering exercises. I mean, I, I'm preaching to the choir here in the room. But we want to spell that out on the website to show all of the efforts that have been done, this committee has done, all of the decisions we have made in order to stay on budget. So we're updating the website to show pre-referendum numbers, numbers <coughs> after um, schematic design, which we approved back in January, and then this meeting. Um, that will include a narrative. It'll include links to the agendas, which has all the information, a clip of the video, because then it gives it context and an explanation for it. So that will all be on the website. In that narrative, will you guys be clear about we cannot surpass the 110 million That's you know, exactly net sure. yeah. or the 135.6 overall? Yeah. Whatever. Yes. Okay, I got that number right. In the intro. To make in sure the intro. that, yeah, that in the end, that this project has to stay within that budget. Sure. Okay. Yeah, and, and we're going to spell out, we discussed this at the meeting, the budget breakdown because we talk about construction cost numbers and so we're looking at the value of engineering and, and what that bottom line is. Uh, but people aren't familiar with 136 or 135 million. So we're trying to just make it all clear and easy to understand, but also show all of the work that has been done and that we still are within our budget. I think that's is the question, right? Without having been in meetings and in context and in conversation, as just a community member who's interested to know about the project and you hear cost is going up, well, then why do you keep telling us it's the same number well, from a budget perspective? And the immediate reaction is, well, then you're probably taking either taking money from this place else or you're going to come ask us for money. whatever it is, we got to get more money. And I think you're right, we have to spell it up very, very clearly. This it, is what we've been charged to, and this is what we're helping. <laughs> It would be nice uh, because obviously when I'm looking at these posts, I'm very reluctant to get into them because it right. it spirals. I, but I would drop a link oh, that is yeah, on website that spells it out. Right, yeah. I don't actually have to say a word. I can just and eh, it's getting crazy. Let's throw it in here. And, and that's so a that resource can, for everyone. Yeah. That that we can have something that you know. Here it is. Here's all the information. Here's the agenda. Here's the actual list of value engineering items we reviewed and approved. Instead of speculation, yeah. and I think that would be, I think it's super helpful because I think we are doing things with a lot of questions. Understandably so. It's a complex process, Absolutely. and if you're not in every one of our meetings, it's hard to follow all that. So I think whatever we can do to simplify it and, and kind of give people an understanding of the process might help. So, and we'd all, always, once we do those updates, always looking for feedback. You know, beyond the communication committee. So if anybody happens to go out there and see something and we think you think we can do that more effectively, if you're hearing a question that we're not answering the right way, please, by all means, come back and we can make adjustments to have you guys all want those segments to do that kind of work. So, uh, you know, we want to make that stack as useful as possible. So. Um, all right, and the other piece to our conversation today was really talking about, um, which we've mentioned before, is an upcoming uh, newsletter. Um, so we did talk about our next newsletter, the content of that, uh, what's going to be included. We have called out some specific um, questions and answers that will be included in that newsletter a lot around early enabling because of the timing of this newsletter. We're talking we're looking towards the end of May uh, for the newsletter to back to the household. Also using that newsletter to promote a community meeting that would be a hybrid community meeting, um, hopefully, is, is our approach here where we actually would a lot, you know, ask people to come and ask questions to us directly. Um, and like we had done pre referendum, like we, I think all of us would like to be able to have that opportunity to get engaged with the community in a way that's meaningful for them. So um, that's that's also kind of our path um, as far as communication is concerned. But mostly it'll be uh, again additional updates on um, you know the, the overall site decisions we've made, uh, upcoming next steps, major milestones, um, the groundbreaking. Uh, start to, starting to talk to people about that and getting them excited about that piece of information and, and always uh, remind people on dates and next steps. And I think that's, that's pretty much high level what we're looking for and timing around the newsletter. So we're trying to integrate all that communication and what makes sense, you know, and the, through the summer and into the fall. Any questions or thoughts around that? All right, so we will move on to, uh, I don't think we have anything for professional partnerships up to report. We haven't met recently, 
after working through obviously what we're going to be talking about in um, second session this evening. So our final report is financial report. Um, so the only update is on the invoice tracking sheet and this process is um, included with your agenda packet and that is just updated based on the approvals that are going to happen in the next agenda items. Questions for Kat? Thank you very much. That is the end of our report out. So we move on to new business. Uh, so for our first order of new business, could I get a motion to approve the invoice package as stated in our agenda? So good. No, second. Any discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Still there. Michael, you all right? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, my, my vote is in support, correct? Great, thank you, Michael. Want to give me an opportunity to extend that? All right. Um, all any abstentions? All right. Motion carries. Okay. So now we're going to move on to item G two. So this is what we've been referring to throughout our reports. Um, so I'm going to ask for the motion, then we'll actually open it up for discussion, and uh, we'll be having some direction in our conversation. Um, through uh, OMG, CSG obviously can help us out as well throughout the conversation. This can be so professional partners uh, as part of this conversation. So, um, could I get a motion to accept the updated cost estimate and approve the updated BE list and alternate list? So moved. Second. Okay, I'm going to open it up. And um, just before we start um, and get into the detail, just as a reminder to the committee members that are here uh, this evening, this is a um, repeat of the process that we uh, did back in uh, December into January, where we did our first value engineering um, exercise, if you remember, uh, that was after um, our first schematic, enhanced schematic design uh, review, where we came, if you remember back all that time ago, it seems like it was so long ago, uh, we did that exercise where we actually saw uh, some of the estimate and then saw, had some recommendations that were presented to us uh, that were, were passed through our uh, working uh, group, our design working group, and that is obviously comprised of uh, some members here from the building committee, representatives from the town, representatives of the district, um, a lot of kind of key stakeholders in the project that evaluate and review those recommendations um, and before they even come to us uh, as a package of recommendations to approve. So the same, we are following exactly the same process here tonight. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure everybody understands that this really is a repeat of the process. And it's really the goal here is taking a look at, okay, now we re-estimated this based on what we know now. Let's take a look at some other if we guess, as Richard uh, let us know, we were above budget. That is not something we needed to obviously uh, do something about. Uh, and that's the conversation we're going to have tonight of what are the recommendations to get us uh, back to budget. Um, and we're going to open that up for, for conversation and discussion. But it is the list and the estimate that was in the agenda packet um, prior to you walking in this evening. So um, it's just more of a discussion now tonight. Any questions, comments, thoughts around that? So that makes sense to everybody? All right. I don't know who wants to start tonight or start something. Okay, great. I'm going to start off just actually talking about the estimate. And I think that Mark will jump in. And actually go through the, the PE list and, and talk to how we came up with those items and, and those costs and how we got us back on budget. So basically what you see in front of you tonight is, is, is our uh, DD estimate. Um, again, very similar format, not exactly the same format as we did with the SD estimate. Um, we had completed this estimate, we we're about a little bit under 4% over budget, which Again, at this stage of construction, it's not uncommon. It's pretty much what we see on almost all of our projects. Um, 
and then we work from that point down to get us back on budget. And we'll do that. Um, I just want to point out that that one of the things that that Kat had mentioned is that this is based on today's dollars. So the, the numbers that we carried in this estimate is based on fuel pricing today, the steel pricing of today, um, mechanical equipment. You know, all the all the increases that we've been seeing and, and reading about are included in included in this estimate. And then what we do is we actually escalate that number to the actual bid date. So we, we do add a, an additional contingency as we consider as uh, to bring those dollars to uh, the current dollars we expect to see at bid time. And we did this in, in, uh, in the summer. So I just wanted to kind of point that out and, and, uh, and for everybody to understand that. So the, the estimate itself is broken out um, First section is construction costs. So these are actually the trade, um, the trade costs for, for the project, the actual hard dollar construction. Uh, again, these numbers are based on, on constructing that building today in, in today's market. Okay. The, um, the first line item is the site work. Uh, and then we break it down to a number of different items here. Um, it's a little bit different than, than the SDS and in that we have a few more items that we included uh, as separate line items here. But I'll start off with the, uh, the first item is the early enabling package. And that's the package that's out bid now. Uh, we have the, uh, the site work itself that's broken out into the high school um, and the central office. Um, that's, that's lines uh, 1A, uh, sorry, 1B and 1C. Uh, we have uh, a series of items, actually items D through H, which were Items that were not necessarily shown on the DD set, but we understood from the, the, the meetings we had with the working group that really should have been part of that document. Um, so what we did was we, we automatically included that as part of the estimate. Um, so those dollars are, are covered. And it included um, going with granite curving throughout the site. That's something that, that Russell's was very added about, um, including post tension uh, concrete slabs at the tennis courts. Again, uh, that's the current condition that you have for Current construction of the tennis courts now. We want to mimic that in the new project. Uh, we have thickened asphalt pavement um, on site. Uh, we want to address any of the underground utilities, so just not capping it and abandoning utilities in place. We want to remove everything from the site that, that's not active. Um, and then we've also uh, adjusted the the, um, the elevation of the baseball and tennis courts, uh, which was actually uh, deemed up in this particular case. But, these are items again that we, as you know, working with the working group and Tyson uh, Kim and CSG, really understood this really were part of the project. They needed to be part of the project. It's something that we didn't want to take away from um, the overall uh, the overall site work. The uh, the next slide on it was our paper and demo. Um, again, this this includes the, the hazardous um, waste removal from the building from the existing high school, um, as well as taking the building down. It does. We leave the existing 1920 building in place intact. We're not touching that, uh, but all the other um, parts of the building, parts of the existing high school, still are coming down and are reflecting the cost. The, uh, and then we have the new construction, which is, uh, which is item three, uh, building construction. We have it broken out by the high school and the renovation um, of the, the, the 90s or 900 point rather, and central office. Uh, the last item of that's under construction here is the seven BE items. Um, that's line item four. Um, again, we have marked here as it's accepted BE. Um, technically, it hasn't been accepted until the committee of some approval tonight. But we did, uh, again, include the values, those values that we're going to present later on, to really just to get us back on budget and, and show us, giving you a path on how we're going to get there. Uh, the next section is our reimbursable costs. These are, are pretty much fixed costs um, that were contractual from, from uh, with our contract. Uh, and then the contingencies, which are which is something that's probably worth talking about a little bit here. Uh, our, our first uh, contingency we're hearing is actually design estimate contingency. So at this point, we are working with a set of design development documents. They're not fully completed at this point. Richard and his team are still working on documents, as, as he mentioned. Um, so what we do is we carry an estimate, or I'm sorry, we carry a contingency within our estimate to cover completing those documents from, from today's docs that we, that we used to prepare this estimate 
to when the doctors are actually going to be finished. So we carry an extra contingency in there to cover anything that we might not pick up in the estimate that Richard needs to put into the documents. Um, it could be mechanical, electrical items, the architectural finishes that weren't reflected in the set. So we're out carrying dollars here to, to really finish the drawings. Um, and that's something we do with, with every one of our estimates. By the time that we go out to bid, um, that value basically just gets rolled up into trade costs. So it's, it is two dollars that will be spent for the project. It's not really a contingency that will be left, you know, once we start construction. Um, it does get absorbed into the trade costs once we've uh, uh, completed our, our final estimate. I think we just wanted to point out that in that design contingency line item, that that's eventually dollars that get rolled up into correct the construction costs so that so at the time of our construction documents are complete that percentage goes to zero and those dollars get rolled up so it doesn't uh, add to the cost uh, or reduce the cost it's all it's, it's really those design elements eventually we look to the design contingency as opposed to the e items right at that point to say and then make up that that goes rolled up into the into the construction costs. Uh, the next contingency we're hearing is the escalation. And that's that's something that Richard had mentioned and we had Kat mentioned as well. Um, this is what we are predicting the cost of the trade costs will be at bid time. So again, we, we are figuring, you know, the estimate is based on figuring the dollars today so we're going to shovel on the ground today. Uh, but since we are bidding the job in August, not starting until fall, we have to we have to project or estimate what those costs will be at that at that point. Uh, Right now, we are carrying an eight percent escalation annually. Uh, we don't have a full year until bid time, so we're carrying three point six seven percent of of that eight percent annual rate uh, as as an escalation for the for those trade costs. And again, yes, and for twenty hours, same thing. It does roll up into trade costs. So when we do go out to bid, we're going to give you a, a breakdown of all the trade costs and what we expect those costs to come in to, uh, come in at at bid time. That escalation as well as design estimate or design contingency could be rolled up into those numbers. So it is truly not a, a contingency that would be carried forward for construction, it would be absorbed at, at bid time. Uh, the, the, the next two sections really are just again contractual uh, fees, the CM fees, um, and our CM bond and insurance. Um, so looking at the, at the very bottom line, uh, variance uh, row. Uh, we're currently a little over a million dollars on under budget on the high school project. We're a little over still on the, on the board that building. Um, and total for the total project, we're about half a million dollars under budget based on, again, the VE that we've already done to date that we will be reviewing. Now, that number may change if we decide not to approve one of the VE items that we're going to suggest tonight. But uh, right now, we are in a very good position. Any questions with the other numbers and stuff throughout there? Uh, as you're carrying an 8% per year, obviously prorated 3.67, before this craziness would have, was has been happening over the last you know 12 or 18 months, would you have carried less than that 8% yes. per year? Yes. I think Richard mentioned something like four, so you're yeah. almost <laughs> double. Yeah, three, three to four percent probably back in, in twenty. I mean, back in twenty, just before, just before COVID. Okay. Um, and then it's been kind of going up, you know, two percent, you know, plus uh, per year. So we are carrying, you know, eight percent right now, and it's it's on the high side of eight percent. Okay. And anecdotally, I guess, hopefully not, but for. Our business of residential, I remember having some very early discussions with Richard and saying things are absolutely nuts and you haven't seen it yet. It was almost like a little bit of a delay from the residential sector to the commercial sector. We've seen not a drop off in the price increase, I'll be real clear. The drop off in the amount and the rate of the price increases and as they're coming. Have you guys seen a little bit of that on the commercial side or are you still seeing weekly price increases on items? We're still seeing weekly price increases on a, 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 a state majority of the items, but on some of the major components of a, of a building. And is that, do you think that's fuel driven or is that still 
just increases like we saw lumber last year really go up and then it kind of leveled off came back down and went back up a little bit we saw steel start to spike somewhere around this time last year mm -hmm. and are, are you still seeing those big spikes well, we're seeing it in the mechanical um, I, I just read a, a, a memo just the other day on, on the mechanical pipe copper um, even still heightening um, down up 23 percent over the last 60 90 days okay. so, Right, right. Um, it's, it's, I think, yeah, there's, it's, it's just not the dual, dual yeah, price sure, increases. Yeah. It's, it's happened, you know, prior to that, and it's, and it's, um, it's, you know, prior, really prior to the war. It, but uh, it's, I think it's still, still, um, we're still feeling the effects of COVID and, and the supply chain issues that that's, that's created. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Should we wait until the prices drop back down? My recommendation would be no. Yeah, my recommendation would be no. I'm sort of playing yeah, the devil's advocate. Out there, someone might be saying, let's wait until the prices drop. And I think that would be not wise. No, because you, you do have normal escalation every year, right? So, right. So at what point right. do you? Right. You so know, you so to, part, to of the problem, again. part of the problem with delay is that you're incurring increases. And so you're kind of chasing that as as the more you wait. Like trying to play the stock market. Yeah. Exactly. So build it as soon as you can. Right. I have another comment that I would ask. We kind of kicked it around a little bit during our many discussions about cutting costs is procurement delays. We have been seeing significant procurement delays. Anybody who's ordered anything that has a digital circuit in it has to wait months and months. Or now I'm seeing pumps for some reason, uh, or motors um, having to wait months and months. So, so we've just successfully gotten the state to approve phase one. Phase one was never part of the project in the beginning. It was added and it was a recommendation by LNG, it was a good recommendation to do phase one improvements on the site when students aren't there. Makes all the sense in the world. State approved that. Why can't the state approve early procurement? I've asked this question before. And I, so far, I've received that there's uh, the response was there's no mechanism for the state to approve plans and specs for early procurement of mechanical systems, for example. Why not? I, I think I think because of these extraordinary times, someone should press the state for these kinds of early packages. That's my recommendation. I said we're calling it a phase, right? You'll call it a phase. It's a phase of the project, just like ff &E is a phase of the project. You you will be getting plans and specs for ff &E in the future, yeah. and we're going to go through approval of that with the state. Why not an early package for constructing the plans? The one thing I can say to as far as the as far as the supply chain issues, what helps probably the most is really having an open spec, right? And, and having the ability to submit on, um, let's just say drywall, for instance, you know, giving us the ability to submit on three or four different drywall um, suppliers or vendors so that, that when we do start construction, you know, we got the option of going to, you know, company A, B, or C to provide materials for the job. Um, we've done that in the past on, on some other projects recently that has been very successful. So just something to think about with that uh, you know, PM is here tonight. So um, something that, you know, as we're starting to process submittals to, to get maybe two or three different drywall, you know, um, yeah. supplies, you know, suppliers um, submitted at that time just get approved. So that, again, when we start construction, if we have a delay in getting drywall from one supplier, we go to supplier B and get the material for that way. So some of the bigger equipment, again, Having having no spec where like switch gear we have two or three different manufacturers listed so that the contractors can go out and look to find the guy that can get the material you know on site for what we need. So and we'll you know we worked with you guys before in the past on some three projects as well making that happen. So that's really something that we can do now and, and be proactive and, and uh, make sure that we have people on site. 
have said something you need to pass as a building train approval to take that approach? Uh, no, no, I don't. it's something that that, that is a, as a team here that we work through um, okay. as as a specs, you know, as specs being developed and, and as our teams work and queue together to make that happen. So as you're reviewing the design development transitions, structure documents will be looking for specification and support at that vendor. Correct. And that will be a requirement there for all the Trying to do procurement early on some equipment has its downsides too. So it's something that we can discuss board recommendation. You see it, but when you start locking in, not every subcontractor procures from every vendor. And every bid contractor has a competitive bid going in based on their relationships with their suppliers and their contractually bound by schedule that they're bidding on. Intervene and start supplying them with equipment and take on that responsibility. And you also limit, so you're telling contractor A, you, you are going to be handed a product B, which you don't want to work with, and make your vendors different. So we take some of that bid market. So there's a trade off. The, the challenge, I mean, to the Richard's point, though, is the state really has not pulled any of the food for that, for that process. And, you know, and, and uh, fortunately, I would love to be able to work for how to build. Right? Exactly. Like we, we have a list of things that we, we would like to order, but it, it just, we need to follow that state process so that, that we are, you know, city or township reimbursable travelers. Obviously, you know, we're looking for guidance and for further conversations with you guys on what these most similar opportunities are. Again, the last thing I want to point out too is again, this is our DD estimate. You know, we will be doing one more estimate. Um, we are CD estimates, as I should have mentioned earlier. Um, so, again, we'll have the ability to again, look at the current pricing. Johnny's point to, to make sure that we are, you know, still are within budget, that we're still following, you know, the current market trends and, and taking account, you know, those numbers in the estimate and then again, making those adjustments to the value of engineering if needed or, or some of these other percentages uh, as well. So, uh, we're not there yet. We're still, still at the DD. Just a little bit. A little yes. more. Um, any questions for the bar? So we haven't touched owner's contingency or, uh, or FFME or technology or any of those numbers yet. So, so separate, those are, those are separate. separate. Those are, so you've got 115, let's call it 15, six for, for construction costs. Um, so we are, you know, you, you, the, the balance between that and 135 million is designed to be costs and professional fees, but then all of the contingencies and FFME pick up. So those numbers are not much yet. No, we were just I, for the communication committee when we start off with explaining the costs. I think we just need all of that broken down to get to the 135, including reimbursement from the state. You know, I, I see it as like a visual. We have a chart that we use. Yeah, we like right central right. office and FHS, just so we kind of start off with like this is what was approved. This is how it breaks down in construction costs and FFE and contingency. And all of those things, just because I, I do think these numbers would be confusing at times to the community because they remember, like Kat said, 135 million. Where are you getting this 115? Where are you get, you know, where are you getting these numbers from? So I think a, a, a simple chart to kind of start everyone off, like, okay, everyone, this is what the budget is. Yeah. We're staying within this budget, and this is how it plays out in all those different areas. And then highlight construction costs. And here's where the, and work here's the explanation of construction costs yeah. and how we're you know going through the process of that. Great. I think what would also be helpful is how much of it could be owned by the town. Like when there's a reimbursable. Yeah. So all 135 is not right. on exactly. the town. Right? Right. So I think that should be yeah. So let the state reimburse. Right. Yeah. So I yeah. think that would be helpful too. Yeah. 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 
think it is another reminder. We talked we talk so much about some of these numbers, but it was a lot of them. When we really yeah. looked at it as a total picture, we've been so focused on construction projects. It's good for us to kind of recenter it. And yeah, the idea. Re referendum, but you would revise that. That's yeah, I can see the. the I can too. I, I can, can even see, see the, the color. I can not I started. Yeah, that's like that exists. So I think, yeah, that's, that'll be a great addition, I think, for people to see that. All right. And yeah, that was helpful. Man. Thank you. Yeah. So, so again, you know, based on based on this estimate, we are a little over five point dollars under budget, but based but that's based on line item four there, which is our accepted PE items. Yep. And again, accepted in, yeah. in, in our eyes, they're accepted, but they're not. They haven't they're been, not, you know, been worked yeah. by it. But this is the view. So, this would be the view to have us in budget. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, gave us. Right. so our job now is to take a look at everything that's included under that item four. Um, and again, like at the beginning, this has been you know pre-evaluated, reviewed. These um, have been discussed at length. Um, so I don't want you to think these are the first time anybody's actually evaluated or looked at these items, but it's important for us as a committee to understand these and uh, you know to make sure that we, we have clarification before we go ahead and do any kind of approval. So other uh, mark? Yes. Um, great. Thank you, Devin. Uh, just really quick, want to again reiterate this has been a tremendous collaborative effort on the professional team. I want to thank the professional team for all their uh, time and energy that we put into this, and the building committee and the working group and everybody else that's been involved to get us to this point. This is very similar to what we did uh, the first go around. Um, the list um, it was based on some of the same categories. So. If you look at the list, you'll see that uh, you know categories A, B, C, D, and then we had G. So we had some in there that just there were no B E items impacted. So we took them off the list. We wanted to keep a clean list. This first list that we're going to look at, these are items that were reviewed and we're calling uh, approved by the working group to move forward to the building committee. This is the dollars that make up that um, that base bid reduction that gets you to that very base, that very bottom two base bid under budget that 511 that mark was sharing uh, in, in the budget. So these efforts are all of these numbers, all of these items are things that will be extracted from the base bid, so they'll no longer be in the project. Uh, and then we have a separate list that we're going to talk about the alternates that if bidding is favorable. We can choose from this menu of items that we'd like to put back into the base bid um, should the project be able to afford it. So um, we, we looked at substructure, the exterior of the building, the interior of the building, uh, services and, and site work. And then we have sort of a mix of items that were carried over for um, schematic design. So the first item is uh, eliminate moisture vapor barrier roof reducing admixture from the concrete. So there was, this is a, a, a vapor barrier chemical that's in the in the concrete itself. It's an admix that gets blended with the concrete as it gets poured. And what it does is it reacts with the moisture in the ground and prevents it from penetrating up through the slabs. The, the base bid already includes a system, a moisture barrier system that gets applied over the uh, earth and below the concrete application, I felt that this was a redundant item uh, and uh, carried this over as a, uh, as a as a not needed in our to carry in our base pit. So we'll go through this whole list and then go to questions. You think? Yeah. I think so. You think I think yeah. you can do it pretty briefly. Sure. You know, and maybe just say quick and then any questions on them are very good. Very good. So the next uh, set of items were the exterior of the building. We looked at the roofing material, uh, uh, changing back from or changing from a, a, a plastic base to a rubber based TPDM. Same warranties. Uh, felt that this was an easy item to select. Uh, there were guardrails that were shown on the landing of the back landing of the stairwell, so nothing that impacts uh, anyone walking up the stairs. Uh, these are just uh, guardrails that we felt were not required uh, as part of the job. It should have uh, probably just a, a carryover from another project. And so we, we chose to eliminate those guardrails. Um, you heard Richard talk a little bit about percentages, skylights and things like that. So we um, identified with the professional team that 20% of skylights uh, that could be reduced from the building wouldn't affect the natural light or the effect that they were looking for. Uh, and so we agreed to a 20% reduction of skylights um, and eliminating the round skylights at, uh, at the gym. 
uh, inside the building. Uh, so the interior, uh, we looked at reducing the overall interior glass. You recognize there is a lot of glass um, in that in that building uh, for, for a lot of great reasons, but felt that we could reduce that overall inter uh, interior glass area, I think the number was 10%. Um, and then uh, the next one was to delete wall tile at the uh, CMU and epoxy paint in the locker room. So uh, this is this item is to take out, you've already got a, a, a hard surface CMU wall in the locker room, but epoxy paint, you get the same effect as you would putting tile over already a hard surface wall. So that was just in the locker room. Um, to take to take that out, uh, we talked about replacing the tecton blades and baffles. Uh, these next couple of are this next item uh, has to do with um, acoustical ceiling tiles. In uh, is this in the in the art space? I believe this is in the art classroom. Yeah, yes. in the art classrooms, the the base bid carried these sort of floating clouds of ceiling tiles, and this is to um, uh, re I'm sorry. They have these tecton blades and baffles that were deflecting sound, uh, and we're going to uh, go with a different option that provides the same effect with these acoustical ceiling tile clouds. Uh, the last one was adjust bait, uh, spray fireproofing, and incandescent estimate. We recognize that some of these exposed columns did not identify spray uh, fireproofing uh, on those steel exposed steel columns, and we needed to make sure we had an incandescent paint. So this was this was an ad uh, to make sure we had them back into the program. The uh, next one in services, uh, eliminate air conditioning from the existing team rooms. Um, this was, there's, there's no AC in those team rooms now, uh, but we're gonna retain at, um, the existing ductwork and any minimal renovations to existing team rooms. So this was uh, 113,000 that came out of, out, of that, uh, out of that section. The uh, site work changes, we went from pavers to concrete, made sense uh, with town engineering. Um, easier to maintain the concrete, uh, and um, they'll they'll take the wear and tear more than the than the actual uh, brick pavers. Um, reduce the overall concrete sidewalk areas. So this item and the next item we're talking about uh, reducing the square footage of sidewalks. So we may reduce the actual width, maybe not necessarily the the, the sidewalks themselves, uh, and then reducing um, some of those concrete walks and changing them from concrete to bituminous. Uh, the um, which is which is blacktop. The, the the last one is eliminate the baseball field uh, in its entirety. So that's clearing. Of, that's that uh, basically the the ball field, uh, that practice field, taking that out and replacing it with uh, with a with a, a grass field. So that that's those are the items there. The additional VE items carried over. Um, these are the horizontal uh, shades. So the exterior building there are two horizontal shades at each. Um, classroom to prevent the sun from penetrating into those windows. We feel we can go to one and get the same effect. Uh, reduce the, um, I'm sorry, uh, the next item was to deduct the um, porcelain tiles uh, for the one by two linoleum tiles in the lobbies and corridors. Here, so this is to change from porcelain to linoleum. There are um, uh, decorative wood ceilings that are in the uh, corridors. This is a change to, to, to eliminate those wood ceilings and go with a acoustical tile uh, in those corridors. And then um, uh, number four deduct, uh, those are uh, drywall board soffits in the stairwells uh, under the stringers and landings. Uh, and the next one is deduct the ground face CMU for, uh, for the um, partitions, any partitions and high traffic wall coverings. Uh, so basically this is changing out the ground face block to sheet rock with a high traffic wall covering on that sheet rock uh, uh, to avoid any damage to those walls. Uh, and then the last one is to change all of the lockers to a uh, to sort of a half size as opposed to full size lockers. And so those were all the items that we uh, totaled up to a base bid reduction of 4.8 million. Um, we had a $4.3 million over budget a challenge. Uh, this, this would solve um, that that over budget variance and provide us with a new base bid under budget of uh, a little over a half a million dollars. I'd like to go to the next list and then we can open it up because there is some correlation between the two. So this next list is we're calling approved alternates. These, these are alternates that, um, that we've identified as opportunities to bring back in. Uh, they, were, they were items that we felt were, um, were good items and, and would would be important to the school if we could afford them. So we'd like to put back in um, 
given the opportunity that bidding is favorable, one of those horizontal shade window types we would want to put back into the project. Um, we would want to add the porcelain tile back in for that one by two linoleum uh, in the lobbies and the corridors. Uh, we'd like to add the wood ceilings back in, given the opportunity. Um, add the drywall soffits and the stairwells under the stringer and landings. Uh, we would want to go back to a ground-based CMU block in the corridors uh, and um, add, there's an add here to go back to full-size lockers. Um, the, uh, there's, a, there's another add here for operable windows, uh, which currently are not shown, but this would be uh, a premium uh, for, for, uh, uh, for an operable window versus the, versus the fixed window that's, that's in the base bid. Uh, the last one would be to add back the ball field work um, in its entirety. So uh, put the ball field back in that, in that location should the project be able to afford it. Uh, the last item is really just a, a holding, uh, a placeholder to, uh, uh, for credit backs. Uh, so should things move forward or things change with those existing uh, gyms or the 1928 building, um, considering getting pricing to help uh, facilitate the the discussions to, uh, for deducting the demolition of those gyms so they would stay in place and they would come out of the base bid and then uh, potential maybe relocate the tennis works in that area but this is really just a placeholder uh, at that time for possible add alternate things yeah so um, you've got about three and a half million dollars in add alternate subtotals this you know, could be considered a menu to prioritize <coughs> above should uh, Funding come come back or be favorable, or we see some of those contingencies move back up where there's dollars left. Uh, then we're going to look at those and then go back to this list and say, what do we want to add back into the project that makes the most sense for uh, for farming to next? Yeah. Number nine. Can you just do a quick explanation for us why it's important that we have? that item on there sure so we did talk about this a little bit um uh, somewhat at length and uh you know actually do you, do you want to talk a little bit about why it's important to have that now as opposed to trying to chase it chase it later sure we do a great job we'll try um we understand that there is as you open the meeting up with some potential for some changes here on the campus um we don't know what's going to happen in your Committee meetings and as you're doing your analysis. So there's a potential that you could come back to this project and say, we don't want to deduct some of these existing buildings. We're going to, there's, a, there's a program to reuse some of the space. So we want to make sure we're able to capture that credit at bid time so that if you come back to us and say, okay, we're going to leave a gymnasium as an example, we want to be able to capture when it's competitive at the bid time what it's worth not to demolish that section of the so that you can get a full credit for choosing that later on. The project as it's laid out requires those gyms to come down, but not for the construction of those new buildings <coughs> for your extended campus work. So we want to make sure that we give you all the options at the time so that you get the best cost effectiveness when we think we can, which is when you have all of your leverage. So we, we did a little bit of a one if what if session. If um, you chose to proceed forward, one of those areas we want to capture the cost. And if included maybe at a different location for the tennis courts. If you don't take the gyms down, there may be a more cost effective place to place the tennis courts. So you would always have the tennis courts, it's always going to be part of the program, but we may move it. And if we can move it, it, it would probably cost less money. So we wanted to capture that. So really, this is a, providing you with the ability to make a decision later after the bid and to give you the ability to capture the true value. Rather than negotiating with one sum, you're basically getting a number from all of the bidders, which we'll know at bid time for the exchange. Then have it established, but also give your committee some hard numbers to know going forward. So that's the purpose. Does that make sense? I mean, it's just something a little bit different. Um, there's a couple things I talked about. That one I wanted to make sure. Really, what we're looking for here and what we've asked the professional partners is flexibility. Like, 
we know we have some things in flux here. We acknowledge that. We want to do what's in the best interest, uh, certainly of the building pay project and support other initiatives that are going on in the town to the best of our ability. How do we do that in the best way is to remain as flexible as possible and do that in a way that um, our professional partners have suggested that's going to make the most sense to us. So I just wanted to make sure this one looks different. Obviously, you see TBE there, and from a cost perspective, we don't know. Um, but I think, you know, from an approach perspective, I just want to make sure everybody's comfortable with, with that thought process and why we're kind of looking at this from a just flexible as we possibly can be and being really smart about the decisions up front. Without being confusing. Without being confusing, <laughs> right. Exactly. So, We're just going to be honest and this, and this, is, that. this is something that we discussed at working group, obviously. Yeah. And you, uh, um, what Michael was saying is that you know, if, if they go to bid and they're all due on April, I mean, uh, August 1st, and you don't tell them that it potentially can be done, and you go back later, they can say, well, there's really no savings. And I'm exaggerating <laughs> yeah, the situation, yeah, obviously. Yeah, so that because the projects are, this is a project that's in place, this one we have no idea, but if this one does go forward for some reason, they are completely separate things, but the credits would come back to the high school, right. not get incorporated and blurring the lines between this and that. Right. So it is it, it is tough to follow. That explanation was good. Yes. Uh, and I mean, it, even when we were discussing it, uh, it last one I can't keep track of. It was, <laughs> last week, week, last week. it was circling and circling yeah, and trying right. to make sure that it's clear. So it, it is giving the flexibility on this end to allow for every opportunity on the other end, whether it's nothing or something. Thank yeah, you. Just add on one thing. Yeah. Just to be clear, we're doing all add all the next one. This this last one would only be the only feed right? Correct. Right. These yes. aren't the feed Correct. The one through eight is a better one, if you will. That's where you want to use. This one is just like the price. You just get the price. Right. It's for pricing right. purposes so, only. It's correct. Kind of the conversation we have to give us again the best view, the best flexibility. All right. So in your base bid, the demo will be included. Yeah. yeah. But you not. Yeah. That's a good clarification. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. The base bid is demolition. Right. Of what has always been Correct. described, right. but like I think you phrased it the other last week, this is a costing exercise right. to give us that information for flexibility. Right. And, and yes, just again, that we heard tonight that Germany tonight includes the demolition of the entire high school except for the 1928 building as part of their project. That's the base that we've yeah. always talked about. Right. Yeah. So, to reiterate, you'll get the cost. Information now when we have the bid once competitive. ONG schedule will always track when decisions have to be made, but obviously the demolition is after the construction of the new high school. So it's something that I want to make sure. There's a lot of time between bids being received and when that decision needs to be made. So this project, so there's time for your group to analyze what you might and might not want to. But we want to give you that leverage now. That makes sense to everybody. It does. Right there. Right. Uh, I, I just want to um, say that uh, we need to do some uh, editing of the language here for the sake of clarity, because I think this list has been rewritten and rewritten and rewritten, and every time somebody writes it, it's tweet. Yeah. I, I just so I don't want you to. I want you to approve the intent, not the words. Okay. So are we okay with that? Yeah, in the motion included in the agenda packet, we wanted to allow that flexibility to be <coughs> items that include TBD will be updated by the working group and professional partners as information becomes available. So with that note, you are approving that that is done. Yeah. I just think some of this language is confusing is. and not what we intended. Um, so I agree that it just has to be cleaned up a bit. I also just want to be really like thinking back. Did we have other ad alternates not on this list? With the last one? Um, I'm saying like we, I'm thinking we started off with like from the beginning, we had ad alternates. Are we continuing with those other ad alternates that were I just you know ONG, I think. Did you put this together? I don't know if you were here with other ad alternates before you came on board. So I just want to make sure this is everything that we had voted on over time. 
I just have memories of like a gym. Some, there were other things. It was yeah, an they, they were things that were alternate, and there were things that were rejected or approved. No, but this is pre rep This is pre referendum. That's what I'm saying. In like January, February 2020, we came to the committee with about four items. It was like stone in lieu of masonry, gym partition, anti graffiti sealer, maybe one. I have a weird one. I have a weird one. Yeah, and then the catwalk. Catwalk is the last. Wow. So I just want to make sure when we're doing this that there are other items. That over time, this committee. No, uh, no, no they're not. I think well through the, this process, okay. Okay. we have we we leaned out a lot of things that are no longer relevant. So, for example, example the catwalk, we ended up with only one catwalk. Only one catwalk is required. A second catwalk is not required. So, why spend the money to add an alternate for okay, that? So that's probably a bad example. Yeah, that's a bad example. Okay, so <laughs> the anti <laughs> the, uh, okay, so the stone uh, base of the building was completely eliminated. We're not going back to that as an ad alternate. It's out. So it's all brick at this point. Well, yes, we need okay? that. We need that. Yeah, yeah. But you're but you're right. So but you're right. It was at one point discussed as an alternate, but that's been eliminated. Uh, the gym issue had to do with a uh, uh, operable wall between the main gym and the auxiliary gym. Uh, to, do, to do an operable wall, I think at some point in the process, we calculated that it was worth half a million dollars because it has to be structurally supported. It just isn't warranted. And I think the decision by the users was we'd rather have solid walls in the auxiliary gym. And that's the way the drawings are representing that. So that alternate was eliminated. The anti graffiti alternate was eliminated when we made the choice between uh, durable wall covering versus glazed masonry, or uh, sorry, polished masonry, right? Polished standard, neither of which requires anti graffiti code. So that alternate was eliminated as well. So when the committee then voted on alternate, add alternate, it was these things came off without a vote of taking them off. They just came off through the design. Yeah, through, yes. Well, through the list that they you approved. So when things came off the list, that means they're no longer on. Um, I just want to make sure if you know that we are being thorough in the different iterations of value engineering and add alternates that we've done. And, and there have been a few iterations yep. of that. So from like the historic view, and again, it just came to mind. I'm like, are there other ones? I was, I'm not, you know, that's a great explanation. Some just went away when the design became more developed. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but I just want to make sure that, you know, when we approve this, just making sure we look back and make sure that we, there's nothing that we're missing on this list that might be an alternate from the past. We'll, we'll look back one more time, but I, I am okay. very confident that, that all of the odds were eliminated, at least the only alternates I think they're on the table. Okay, this is subject to change again in the next session. Let's just be clear. The estimate has been reconciled. We have sat with the design team. We have sat with the construction manager. We have completely reconciled the EDS. Any conflict between the two entities regarding a perspective of how many square feet is this or how many square feet is that, or what's this space going to look like? This is how I estimated it. This is how I'm going to complete the drawings. They work together, and I compliment both organizations for working together. Based on that process, we got a reconciled estimate that was a bit over budget. So, in order to solve that problem, we sat back down with the design professionals and the user team to come up with a path forward to be in budget. This simple list that we presented represents a lot of complicated meetings to determine what would allow you to maintain the program and still balance your budget, and still be on budget. So this alternate list is those things that you would like to have back, but you don't have money for it. 
none of your other program requirements or none of your program requirements have been removed from the process. They have maintained all of the requirements that they've been given for the building. These alternates are things that would, would, would be an enhancement, but it doesn't affect program. You haven't reduced your classroom sizes. You haven't reduced your meeting space. You haven't given up gym space, but you've made the space affordable. And when the bids come in, if there is savings, then you can tell us which ones of these you'd like to put back into the project. And we'll, again, capture those costs in the competitive bid process so that we're not going back out to a bidder and saying, well, we think we'd like to add back in some wood seals. And how much would that be? We'll have that alternate at bid time when all of the contractors are bidding against each other competitively so that you will see when we receive the bids together, you'll be able to make those decisions. I think, Kathy, to your point, too, mm -hmm. that you thought that maybe there was other items that you might be able to choose from that maybe we had missed in the process that might have been really in the approved item as opposed to an alternate item. So that I, we hear you will go back to the list. Yeah, I think it's just yeah. So yeah, so Mark, a good example would be that gym wall. We we had discussed that uh, at length in the uh, gymnasium planning meetings, and um, we had asked, I, I think we were awaiting to see some samples that were used in other parts of the state or on a college campus for that, but our impression was that that would be on the alternate list based on the discussion that we had. Uh, again, just uh, trying to see what it looks like or see it in action somewhere else too, so we can make some decisions around um, its viability in the high school, if and when that were an option. All right, but we're getting different messages. Uh, the users of the gym uh, indicated that they did not want an operable wall, that they wanted the uh, employee gym to have fixed. Well, it's because they've never seen one, Richard. So when we asked Randall, who's in charge of building the gym or designing the gym to give us an example, we haven't seen one yet. So I think that's that's what the hope was to go see it and then assess its viability. Okay, well, that's a problem because that adds another alternate and expensive one. Potentially, but it already exists as something we've discussed as an alternate. So if we come back to the table with the pros and cons of that alternate, perhaps that's something that is taken off based on the cost versus the value. Yeah. So how can we proceed with this? Should we add that at the next time? Or before we arbitrarily add or subtract anything, then we need to go back and visit maybe some of the minutes of what we have because I. You know, all our memories obviously are going back now a year or so with a lot of discussions. And, you know, I remember uh, hearing a lot of discussion around, well, it's not worth it at this point. It just seems like it's going to be too expensive. We're already going to be up against budget constraints. So I think we should go back and maybe look at some of the minutes, figure out what those, uh, maybe those uh, core items were that, that maybe we need to be refreshed on. And then maybe some of those can get added at maybe the next meeting. But I don't think we want to sit here and start arbitrarily trying to throw things out. I say I think maybe your your suggestion of going back and, and checking those previous lists and making sure that we officially voted on them or officially did it to make sure that we're we're on the same page. Yeah. I mean my my comments are just I want everything to be accurate. I want everything yep. to reflect what we had talked about over the last how many years and you know I it's, it's not to create an issue at this point. It's more to be clear about what we have voted on in the past. And maybe none of those things come back on the list. Um, but I do think it's worth taking a look back and um, just double checking. Yeah. As an alternate, it doesn't affect what the bottom line is right now. Right, right. right. Exactly. It, it yeah. and, I, and, and it should be, it, these lists were created at one point before they were just alternates, they were approved or rejected, and there was graphs along the way that would be in the minutes. Yeah, yeah. That should be fairly easy to follow. Okay. Yeah, and we literally did it before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it was like, before. and there yeah. were, and, and our last BE exercise, that we had a Excel chart that had the columns. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that should be in there. So yeah. whatever we approved out of the meeting that is in the add alternate column, I think I just think we just need to look at that whole list and say, you know, probably a lot of these things are on them. I think actually a lot of they are there. The, while we were meeting, yeah. one through six are on that one. The only ones that I found were catwalk, which we had talked in the design process and change half concrete sidewalk to the treatment. Well, and that's what I'm saying in the past. And it might be in the app. Yes. If I think a couple of the had alternates have got and then were added back in. Yeah. To based on, right? If I understand that correctly, in item one, I think some of those were will be at, at one point then on our ad alternate list. Well, it, it was a consideration that we may have projected that got put into the design as it's going in and that's it. Because if you we start going back, I mean we talked about green roofs. We talked about geothermal and, and and all kinds of stuff that we were throwing around in the very early stages before even ONG was here that we were somewhat trying to get a consensus on that we may have not done an official vote on. But so we, we need to go back to the estimates and the list that we brought up from the very at least when we started getting some hard costs on it. Like uh, and then just verifying that we didn't miss anything. Yeah, I, and think I, what I was in, we were very clear, I believe, in the presentation for our recommendation to town council. Like, if we looked at that presentation, it was very clear that this is in scope, this is out of scope. Yeah. I'm pretty sure, based on that yeah. conversation, that is, I think, our baseline. Yeah. Before that, we're going to get dicey. Yeah, you know what I, I mean? Agree. I think no, it's I agree. Agree. I agree. at the I agree. point that's when my point. Point. I, I can think. start going back to the last building. We <laughs> 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 um, <and laughs> did have a formal vote at the building in early 2020 to revise the estimate based off of there was the reduction with those ad alternates and then yes. our professional partners each had um, a reduction in their uh, basis price at that point also. Yeah. So I think that's it's really that baseline moving forward yeah, making sure we understand the whole ad alternate list. And I what you're probably going to see what it's going to make us most comfortable with, even if it's gone, just tell us then it's gone because yeah. of this thing because yeah. just and then we're level set we're all clear and comfortable and then you know that we i don't think it's going to affect our conversation this evening because we're just bad alternate that's we're talking right. about right right but it's i think that would be good for a good exercise for us one one final list that urges the oh, yes yeah right. yeah, yeah. yeah if that makes sense yeah. yeah so can i ask someone to compile this list of... i already i know where all of you do all right. right that's super it's in my head now, but I know. <laughs> 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 so I think that's something we could probably bring back, right? Yeah. So yeah. We can have that. I mean, outside of the VE conference, right? And evaluation of that. Does that make sense at our next meeting? Yes. Um, to just make sure everything is clear and be. But also, I don't know that. That's going to be helpful. Okay. The other item I wanted to make sure that we uh, brought up, and then I, I want to make sure we'll get comments, questions from the committee. Conversation here about and in discussion is is that item that we have on here, which is G one ten, um, which is uh, talking about eliminating the baseball field. Um, so obviously, this is a large item. This is a, a topic of conversation that was. Um, these are certainly not easy conversations, and that these are. I, I think we all recognize that these are going to get more difficult uh, the farther we get along in the process. But this is one that really came up. For discussion um, and really evaluation and looking at opportunities for us and was something that was presented and reviewed as you see there as, as, a, as a cost savings for us. Um, again, you see it um, also reflected um, as the adult, on the adult kit list as well. So this is an opportunity for us to say we understand this is a cost savings. It's an opportunity not an easy decision by any means. I think for any of us as we have it on our plate now to, to present to actually take a vote on. Um, but I think it's it's real. It's a real conversation we have to have, and and make sure that that consideration um, is part of our conversation and part of our vote. Understanding that we we do have it on that on that alternate list moving forward. So yeah, go ahead. That was on my list of. I just have a couple questions, but um, any context for that? I don't. Where did this come from in discussion? And, um, It, so I feel like I, I may have missed a meeting. No, it was at the working group. Now, in the working yeah. group meetings, there's a lot of ideas thrown around, but right. a lot of it is stemmed from the partners bringing sure. 
ideas, let's say, is the best way to put it. And then we were working through those ideas. So this is one that we discussed. And this, that, like you said, I can't reiterate enough that it was a very tough recommendation from the working group even to hear. Um, my, my feeling is, is that, you know, the numbers that we're looking at are big. If you look at the line items we're deducting, that is one of the major yeah. ones that gets us to where we need to be. And my philosophy, at least this is personally, I can't speak on behalf of the working group, is we save programmatic stuff at all costs, and then we start looking elsewhere, finishes and things. And to me, this is something that could be done down the road, that the, the land is still there, because we have no idea what will happen with 1920 and all that. We wanted to, A, look at it as, as a potential, because that could be something that happens, but B, if it is eliminated because we don't see any cost savings through the bidding process, then it is something that could be added later on. Uh, and it's not gonna affect what we're here to do, which is build a new high school and make sure that the kids in the curriculum and all that sure. are intact. Um, and, I, and, and the last thing I'll say is to not consider that some of the other, other items that are not, maybe are not even on this list that we either approved or rejected, we're worse in my guys than what we're seeing here. So it's hard to rehash the many discussions that we right. had. That's not really but that's the consideration. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I feel your pain. I get that as much as I could without being there. Um, but does that mean that the FHS campus could potentially not have a baseball field? I know we have one at Texas Need that's kind of like the varsity deal, but then what happens to I know this one gets heavy use. Yeah, that, that is a potential okay. that there would not be a, a ball field on the FHS campus. We did refer back to the ed specs, and it does say, in addition, the existing tennis courts, baseball, and softball fields, which are impacted by the proposed location of the new facility, shall be replaced in kind, provided allowable area permits. So I think it, that's part of where it came down to, too, is like Johnny said, the programmatic value inside the building or outside the building. Mm -hmm. um, not an easy decision, but it would it would mean a ball field is not a common And that we're down one. Overall, yes. Over a, well, and, but then also, right, they're rebuilding one at IAR for the, so it's a the temporary time. location. Correct. So we could end up if that's maintained long term, correct? But that's may or may not be in the cards right now or in the plan. But, but it, that it also remember it's not like it, it it disappears. There's still a grass area over there. Like just like the parking lot is taking up an area that they use to do, I think lacrosse and a couple other things that they use it for. There's still an area it just wouldn't right. be configured as a ball field with irrigation. Right. It's not usable. It's not like right. in the program. Uh, and, you know, in scheduling, I'm thinking of like the athletics department and scheduling and hosting games and then just kind of to the level, the same level prior to construction. In the beginning, um, look at we looked at a number of options and it's been a while but we looked at uh, a variety of things and we looked at creating two ball fields right as well as tennis courts and we reported to this committee at some point in the past you can't have it all if you Add the 1928 building. In fact, we recommended that the 1928 building be removed because you can't fit everything like two ball fields, tennis courts, and the 1928. That's when we lost the softball loss. I'm saying that the softball field went. That's correct. Okay. That's yeah. correct. When the that. council said, no, we want to save the 1928 building, something had to go. And given the way the ed specs were written, it was whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Something had to go. So, um, if if bids are favorable, and if the 1928 committee does not want to salvage the auditorium and the, uh, and the gymnasium, then you could consider putting the ball field back. And it becomes part of the conversation to have, like you said, of this list ultimately yeah. that we're going to prioritize, depending on how what we have available to us. It gets prioritized with all these other items right. based on cost and everything else. But 
tough one. It's a kind of probably the first real, real tough one that we have on our plate. That's a pretty big change. Um, something to talk about. So I just wanted to make sure to call that one out. I'm sure people are going to do things, but uh, make sure to have that conversation because it's an important one for us. But it, it's, you know, I try to be extremely clear not, not to mix. And, so, and there's no 1928 committee yet. Be careful. But the council also has a separate committee running on ARPA funds and it has to be used towards capital projects. And so that 1928 discussion gets into that. Well, if, you know, and again, huge what if, if everything fails and we tear everything down and it's all there, well, capital money is, is got to go somewhere. It could be to another school, but it could be to a ball field. There's so yeah. many different tentacles to this thing. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, and I, you know, again, I go back to my earlier comments of, you know, pick your, pick your, <laughs> your worst one. You know, like there, there's no great deduction here. Never is. This, Never. And that's why this one was a tough one. Yeah. Yeah. What's the net impact on the athletic department or the team? How does it expect? You know, whatever we do to change things, it can be more transportation costs to get students to, like, say, the IAR field on a regular basis. So there's, I mean, we, we had a lot of discussion about anything we do with value engineering that creates more maintenance needs more custodians. So we tried to be really, I think, thoughtful throughout the process that we don't want to do things now, but then have cost implications for our town later on. So I think some things didn't get into value engineering because of the maintenance, additional maintenance costs that we would incur over time. And you know there is some cost here because usually students would just go out to the ball field, but now we have to <coughs> transport them somewhere for practice and you know for other you know I think junior varsity games that right. we would have there. So it definitely has some impact, um, but I think given where we are, it's probably wise to put it on the ad alternate list at this point because we are in flux when it comes to the 1928 building and let's figure that out and then um you know and then address it potentially later just anything more that the thing i'll go through now and then we'll absolutely turn it up if i get any questions All right, so um, so I'm going to make sure we started right off with the conversation. But any other thoughts, questions, or anything else on any of the items that uh, Mark wants us to do that are on the list? Any more clarification? Or... Just one last quick question. Uh, in the working group, the sidewalks and the bituminous, I know that there were still discussions that had to be done with engineering on what that would actually be in those those discussions done, like, can you reduce it, the width or whatever, are those discussions finalized and are these numbers reflective of those discussions? So I uh, reached out to <clears throat> engineering to set up a time we were going to be scheduled for today. However, the request was that engineering would prefer that we have the architect identify the areas first, bring them to them for their review and approval as opposed to looking through them identifying what they can live with and then going to the design group so that was sort of um uh that that changed today so that's so we've instructed uh, or reached out to PSKP to see if that would be possible okay so when these numbers could vary a little bit yes that number would would still be under without that number but Correct. Yeah. So would it make sense to wait until we have that review? I mean, that's, I'd, I'd hate to come back after this process and then try and add something back in as well. Like that, that's never going to. But if they stay as an ad alternate, they are out as a number. But if we leave it as a place pending, holder, we're still that under place for this round. And then we just still have it as something that's pending if we come to another one of the things there is on a locomotive heading towards construction line in a very yeah. short we are time. And uh, the challenge is going to be not hold them up. They need to proceed and complete these documents. And we've given them 
um, well, collectively, we <coughs> design team, the construction manager, the program manager, and all of the owners has agreed upon a path forward. And they they are at a point now where they have to finish the drawing. Oh, I get that. I just, I'm just not sure the owners agreed on this one. If, we, if we're still in review with the town, right? Um, well, there's been an agreement to reduce the square footage of sidewalks by 20%. And that's what the agreement says to convert a certain percentage of concrete sidewalks to asphalt. What we're going to work on wow. is finding the best places to make those adjustments. Yeah, the percentage may not be achieved. So the number may be adjusted. Yeah, so the, this 511 that we're looking at as a baseline may be less. Right. So I, I, I understand your point that the numbers are showing 511, but those numbers might. Well, let me let's back up. If these didn't show up out of thin air, there must have been some discussions, even if they were in just working group, you know, not working group, sorry, it was different. Within the partners and the many meetings you alluded to, these numbers didn't just show up out of thin air. There must have been some discussion around them. Uh, and why a 50% or like a just like you asked a 10% skylight or a 30% this or 50% this, did these numbers evolve from discussions if you feel confident? So we had conversations and looked to the design group to say, so what ONG took the approach to say, listen, you have X amount of skylights where you have this much of the skylights, what percentage could we agree to that would be, you know, work programmatically uh, to, you know, to get to uh, where we feel and PSE we feel the design is not uh, crippled uh, to the point where it's not producing what the design was the design intent was and so we went back and forth there was a lot of a lot of back and forth in terms of what percentages were agreed to we had to get to a number um, right and, and I, that i understand because that we we talked about that working group but when it comes to the deducting 50 percent of the or 20 percent of the concrete sidewalk area so we had conversations to say perhaps we could go from um, six foot wide, five foot wide, and how much would that reduce? What okay. closer to the building would we look at? Where would we make those changes? And I think in conversations with the working group, we kind of talked with Russ and sort of say, you know, we want to give you the opportunity to tell us what you can live with and what would make the most sense. Um, I think it was my under my understanding that the percentages, although painful. We as a professional team agree to carry those percentages, but maybe we can't achieve that. And so I'm, you know, I'm not sure why not. But. So when this item came up, that's why I made the suggestion that engineering needs to agree to what pavement could be cut and what pavement could be changed. And uh, we don't have we don't have consensus on that yet. So. Um, one possibility is don't accept those alternates yet. We don't have consensus on them. You were asked us today to take a cut at make, making the cuts. Um, maybe these should be alternates should be eliminated from the list. It makes that five eleven smaller. No, oh, understood. And I this is going back to Sam's point. I I don't I'd like to see them investigate it because if there's savings to get there, then you know, we can realize those savings somewhere else. I don't want to just get rid of that. But I also don't want to carry numbers that are transparent and are, are, are added to that. I guess it's so, I guess it's for, I'd be looking for how to handle this, at least from a committee standpoint. And, you know, you're asking us to, to agree with this and we're 99% there. How do we put into a motion this little portion so it's not confusing? And we don't forget about it. I, I, yeah, we have another estimate. So I mean, we could we could eliminate it altogether. From the I mean, there's a for another example is the exterior um, glazing that's not on this list. It's a three hundred seventy thousand dollar item that's being vetted. We're we're proceeding with that. We so just not it. so it's not on the list. No, it's not on the alternates list. That's an item that was a decision. We are proceeding with it, but that's not on the deduct list. So it hasn't come out of the budget yet. So what I'm saying is, if you're going to find 300 and something thousand in the exterior glass, 
<clears throat> that would that be added to this? We're thing. cutting the glass, the exterior glass by the ten percent. So we cannot an item. It was skylights was ten or twenty or twenty percent. Twenty percent. Twenty. All right, so we're, 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 we're proceeding. We're going to proceed with this alternate. If it's if it's not if there's a good, there will be another estimate done, and if we don't achieve the percentages on here, we will come back to the committee and say, you, you authorize us to proceed with these reductions. Here's our <clears throat> CD estimate. And we met that criteria, or we missed it by X percent. And, and then you would have another chance to say, well, go back and figure it out. If we want to meet that number, or here's the plan, and we like the way it looks, and it's acceptable because we're going to need your approval at that point to proceed anyway. So the best, the, another way to look at this is the best case is that these numbers are changed, right? And then the 511 stays the same. If we can't get to 20% and 50% and we're some percentage below that, it just means that the number, the 511 gets reduced, right? But in reality, the kind of, the total of those two line items is about $300,000. So you're still the net savings, even if none of it was achieved, is still two eleven under right. the budget, right? Yeah. So you're approving, I guess, the best case in achieving these reductions, and if they aren't achieved in total, that that we're that we're, I guess, suggesting now, it would be something less, but we're still under the budget. It's not like it's going. If we're rolling the other way around. Or the in the other direction, then I would say, yeah, maybe we should pull these out. But even if we don't achieve them, it's kind of like the glass. The glass isn't on this list. Once we figure out what that glass reduction will be, we'll be able to pick that up. Likely in the in the CD estimate. It, I would just say that from an optic standpoint, I would rather approve a list to the public that shows two hundred thousand dollars and shows why in it they it. Better tells the story of why the million one of the ball field was warranted than having the 500 that may not have it. I, it just from an optical sure. standpoint, I think we'd be better off sure. not eliminating them like we stopped the discussion, just like not having them on this list as, a, as an approved alternate at this point. Do they go alternate? Do they go pending? So they would get added to the pending. We go back to the pending list, which is in here. So that. Yeah, with these other items that we're researching yeah. that are going to go one way or the other, depending correct, on what we decide, right? There's, decisions that have, there's information that has to come back to the working group. So, with like the exterior glass, we were tasked with, we, we said we'd rather leave it impending because we yeah, wanted yeah. to look at I'm, where. I'm confident that we can achieve the glass, and, uh, exterior yeah. glass, and the skylight targets. I'm confident. This uh, pavement, I'm less confident. So, then going back, then I would feel more comfortable taking these off the list and putting them back into you guys' pending court and your discussions without yeah. this and then you know at least publishing a list that's accurate at least that we that is that is not going to come and change it could change again for more further discussions with more essence on the road but it wouldn't change for what we agreed upon right Sorry, that was a short question. We'll be talking about is item uh, C104 and 105 coming off uh, this BD recommendation list to the thing to the pending. That's that one. When we get to the pending, the the concrete, the bituminous, I think is fine because it's that's you know you look at the amount of area and that's it. But the the one that says reduced by twenty percent, I think, is the one that's in question. Am I wrong? On that. I think you should take uh, them both off. Yeah, both. 50% okay. is going to be tough to do too. Okay. Yeah, Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And obviously, that's going to jump up then. Okay. Okay. Right. right. Correct. So the so the um, that means we can go back to the budget. Uh, no. So the first slide that Mark. Uh, Walking through right there, yeah. So that, so that um, item number four accepted the items. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That there will change. Um, right now. Uh, and then they, the overall bottom line number will change. Like, 
you say that again? 214, if I have it up for a moment, 934 would be the under. New base bid under budget amount. Two one four nine three four. Two one four nine three four. I believe that's that's what's all right. One four nine three four. I'll see it in the motion. So that we're all clear. Yeah. Yeah. Or we have to amend the motion as well, right? We have to amend the motion as I asked for it. PTSD from my time on the board event, but <laughs> any reduction in roofing materials? Yeah, yeah. You know, is that are we comfortable with that? Because the leaky, you know, we've lived through yeah, leaky yeah. roofs That's and true. everything else. I mean, I, yeah. It's actually so, um, <laughs> Which one is most that? Of, most of our roofs. 102, 102, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, most of our roofs. So, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, and it's a, it's a easier to manage over time as far as maintenance. No, just, yeah. <laughs> this jumps out at me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Advocate. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, that's a lightning round in this community. Yeah. <laughs> big discussion, but I did want to ask about lockers because I know we went down to Guilford and even in prior conversations and having put one kid through high school and now I have a high school where they don't use the lockers. We don't, we used to say it's because they're not convenient because it's a sprawling building, but then Guilford kind of played with that too. So is this based on 100% First, for 100% of the student population. Okay. So there's an ad alternate here. This is why we need to tweak the language. There's an ad alternate here for ad full size lockers. Right. And then on the other side. And that's not worded the same as you see it in the other uh, language. Right. Because in the value engineering, it says to change lockers to smaller slash half size. Yeah. So that's a so size. So people are writing it differently. So let me explain what's in the plans. <laughs> the plans, the DD plans show 700 stations that contain two lockers. That's a total of 1,400 lockers, half size lockers, okay. student lockers. Plus, we have lockers in the PE areas, we have lockers sure. in the art areas. But in the student areas, it's 1,400. 700 double lockers. You need 1,400 lockers based upon experiences we've had in other schools. Students don't use the lockers. It is a potential savings. And so that's why I can't remember who came up with the idea, but maybe it was me. I suggested look, we can have as an ad alternate 350 double lockers. In other words, the base number, the base bid would be 350 double lockers, total of 700. And an add alternate for 350 double lockers. So you could potentially reduce the number of lockers in half. And then you're talking about 50% of the student population. Yeah. And, and the rookie group reviewed that and yeah. rejected that. And so that's why I didn't make the list. So I'll take so what you're telling me is that this 227, that's the 
that we've taken out is a, is a non needed number. We can put that back in because right now you have 1,400 lockers, pass size. Correct. And so we don't need this 227. That will change the lockers to that because you've already incorporated that in the base bit based on previous conversations. But that would reduce your, um, that would reduce the 214, right? Right. So we're that, that this would, would add back. the same number. We yeah, this would make it double. We would take that full size locker. So you what you're saying, I, I can have that credit back. You would, so I can have that deduct back. So uh, I'm not sure. This is this is where the language gets a sure. little murky. So um, we have 1,400 stations. Yeah. You want single lockers, but you want double lockers. You need double lockers to achieve 1,400 lockers. Right. So there is no full locker option. No. Okay. You cannot achieve 1,400 single tier lockers if there isn't enough for them. so so if you want 1400 lockers you have to take the half size which is currently in the basement correct well and in the estimate well in fact in the estimate we're, we've got uh we're doing a little bit better because we've got a credit here i'm sorry we have, we have a we have a uh deduct to go from full size to half size when in fact we already had half size. So I think I think we what we did was we reduced the size of those boxes. I'm curious what's on the base bid document instead of the number change of 12. This this BD item was actually to reduce those size of those boxes. But with wrong completely the computers. Oh, it's always even smaller. It's a smaller size of the fifteen. Yeah, we didn't change the number of lockers. We just reduced the size of lockers to make to save money. To save right. So that was the other thing we were talking about. That's right. So you've got two. You've got two, or you can get two smaller ones, or right. the four, or the four tier lockers, four tier smaller lockers. So that <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we find that that's really a practical. So yeah. double tier lockers are 30 inches each. That's enough for a jacket, backpack, throw some stuff in. Yeah. Going to quads reduces that to uh, 15 inch high lockers. That's really, that's a box locker in an airport. That's not, so to bullet point what we have in the design documents now, you have 700 half lockers, 30 inches high. Or no, no, we have no, 1,400 half lockers. Half You've got a Correct. half locker for the entire population built into the design documents now. Correct. And is in the estimate. Yes. Yes. Okay. So this line item for 227 goes to full size 700 lockers. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Correct. Yes. You can just get rid of that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's right. It's too much of a risk to to get bigger. To have it for viewers to know. So that that I think the 1400 half size would be the appropriate. You feel like you need to because if, if even if there's a student who might want two and another student who wants no locker, we have that flexibility. If everyone wants a locker, we have another. Yeah. So we also have full height lockers in the art area. Mm -hmm. It, so if some student insists on full height, we could be assigned a locker yeah. there. But the, the half height is exactly what we saw in the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So you don't feel like it's, you can't reduce it below the student population. It's too risky to- Well, I think you that Scott and I, you know, we don't know what the future will bring. This is a building that will last a long time here in Cartier. We don't want to make a design decision that then, what were they thinking? Look, you know, lockers are very important now, 10 right. years from now. Right. Who knows? It, this could be a uh, so I think we felt having one for each 
student made sense and the half locker made sense and it gives us flexibility which is what we've always said about this building is the if it's designed for flexibility, it adapts in the future to whatever trends might be happening. And some of these trends can be really surprising. They can go way back and some disappear. You know, things that we've had in schools are no longer a trend. So I, I feel that that's the right approach. Yeah. Okay, the, that's what I just want to ask because I know the, it's kind of a loaded question. The principal no, also that. mentioned that logistically, even though they were only getting half the population to use them, finding out which half it was, was a nightmare. Yeah. Right, right, yeah, it's a whole administrative yeah. process. Yeah. So just yeah. not, so not worth it. What I think I'm hearing is that there's no alternate here. Right. It's just provide 1,400 size yeah. yeah. That's going to be fair. And that affects your, that affects your estimate. So, so pulling that two twenty seven off, we're now twelve thousand dollars over one. Okay. That's that's the way to put it. Because we took off one hundred four, one hundred five. We took off one hundred four, one hundred five, and six. Six. Number six. Right. So. Then to clarify this line six at for full size so because there's not enough space you're going from 1400 and half size to 700 full size and you're saving 227,000 it doesn't drive i mean it's confusing <laughs> and, and that, huh? yeah i get it uh, yeah so that item doesn't come off yeah, yeah. yeah the, the alternate, the alternate, the alternate should go away is, is yes. right. doesn't affect the budget The table is one one item, but let me go back to the actual back one. Let me go back to the full estimate. And then I'm leading up March to exactly what we period. You know, what's on the drawings right now, what we period in the estimate, and then what this this BDI complex. Because um, there was a lot of discussions about either reduce the size of lockers or reduce the number of lockers to keep them cap size. I just I just want to confirm it. Make sure everybody has the right information. So, yeah. Um, just reflecting that our best course matching is what we do. If, if, um, I know you guys are going to hate me for this, but. I mean, we're not canceling the next meeting, right? Two weeks from now. And could we table this until these few items are taken care of. And, and, we, and, and we, we look through that last list to see if there's anything else that we've had to do so that when we approve this, it's just exactly we're not having these discussions going forward, whether it's wording or numbers or et cetera. Does that, would that affect anything in the schedule to the point where uh, if we <laughs> table, <laughs> table, <laughs> table, <laughs> table <laughs> I would have to defer delay. Yes. I have guys working, you know, long hours trying to get the documents finished and accurately illustrating the alternates. And so, for the direction we've been given, I need to illustrate both scenarios. So, so we were to approve the value management items tonight, with the exception of those two, because those two are coming off, coming off the list. For the three, sorry, the two sidewalks, ones, and the lockers. And the committee approves the list of items without a balanced budget. So we know we've got a list of items that are approved and definitely moving forward that we're not going to change, that we're not going to change. Oh, yeah. That okay. should not hold up your. I would just suggest for clarity's sake. Except for the committee and for the public, having a clean list of what is out, what is in, and potentially if you need approval to go forward, we can also do a special meeting and just have that discussion sooner than on that. I mean, what, what Mark is saying is let's approve everything but those three items, even if it's over budget, 
<clears throat> and then come back and shore up the last few items on a separate boat and so okay. that we're not potentially undoing what he's working on over the next until we meet again. And, and is that's is that you, that's what you're going to right. In two weeks, we would have the sidewalk vetted and we would have the clarification on the lots. So we could, we could clean those up, those three lines. Right. In the next at the next <laughs> meeting, but at least approve the rest of this list tonight. So the motion would be to, to approve this, less those three items, which would show us a little bit over budget. Show us twelve thousand, about twelve thousand dollars over budget, and then we have to come back and. So can I make another suggestion, and then we would make one more motion to reduce the design contingency by twelve thousand dollars. So, can you give us another week? Can we get it all reconciled? Uh, uh, TSB is telling us that he's going to be behind. So, um, I, I, I'm not. We could, we could try to revise this list and do a special meeting for the next couple of days. I just, but let, let's let's just be clear on a couple of points. The design right now is for a double set of walkers, fourteen walkers. We're not asking you to change that. So we're not adding any work rules. Because you're going to keep the lockers the way you currently have designed them. The other two items are either reducing the size of some sidewalks or changing the composition from carpet to asphalt. That's not going to hold you up in the next two weeks either. All the other items we've agreed to. So, and there's a third alternate that we're working on. Which is reduction of the glass, which you've also said is going favorably. So there will be a future meeting where you will be presented with cost savings for some reduction in the glass. So we can pursue, you know, with your authority. Uh, there are no disputed items that he needs an answer on to keep him on schedule. I don't agree with your statement that you're going to be behind schedule because we don't direct you on asphalt sidewalks. That's the only one that's going to change what you're designing. You're currently designing double walkers in 14 locations. That's what's on the drawings. That's what you said you prefer. So, Richard, I don't think we have a situation where this is going to be We're doing the best we can. You're doing a great job, but relative to the conversation at hand, we're not holding you up. I think we'd hold them up if we didn't. <coughs> Excuse me. We, we'd hold them up if we didn't approve anything. Is what right. I, what all I the other it. items we've all. Well, I think we reached this. Well, well that, that we have, but that was part of our discussion on the table. Is a level of comfort on how clean are we? Is this you know absolutely accurate? We had you know questions on a couple here, plus on really understanding the lockers. Getting done deeper in that is our full list of alternates complete. So we've got a lot of questions on the document in front of us. So the, the question in hand is do we wait and get a clean document and approve it all, <clears throat> or do we approve I, portions with the amendment? And I think that's what Richard was saying. You can't do anything. I think I like, I'm oh, sorry. I, you're right. And I think I'd like to suggest that Chris made, or it, it, we eliminate those three. The design contingency at 3.8 million, the 12,000 is literally a rounding error. Make that, make it zero, approve this list, come back with those three items and that other uh, glass issue for a potential savings that we could even further go down, but that is actually, I think that's the cleanest one. I just fear we're gonna be back here in two weeks having discussions on those other items again. No. We're, we're also, I mean, I mean we can, if, if we even took out, I mean, we're, we're kind of making the play here with the design contingency, taking, taking the $12,000 out, which is just, it's an accounting function, right, at, at that point. We are still meeting with the town. We are still hoping for some favorable savings in the, side, the sidewalk issue, I'll call it, right? I've got to imagine we're at least going to achieve the $12,000 in the sidewalk conversation to absorb that versus versus playing 
further complicating and saying, because I don't, I also don't want to set the precedent of just saying, oh, we'll just use the design contingency to, to balance it out. And, and I fear that by doing that this time, that's kind of the direction we're going. Right now it's 12,000. The next time, oh, it's only 100,000 out of a $3.8 million design contingency line item. And I don't want to get into that argument. I would rather, I would reach, rather leave that for its intended purpose and leave the $12,000 as an overage right now, knowing that we're going to come back in two weeks with some sort of information on those two line items for sidewalks. So at a minimum, our responsibility as the design team, I'll call it, is to find at least $12,000 of sidewalk savings. That, I mean, is that fair? Right? I mean, I would say that going into that meeting with the town, there's got to be $12,000 of savings or somewhere. Okay. So, are we accepting just the BE list? We're accepting it without those three things. Are we accepting the cost estimate? Because that would change. I would say no. So, we're just accepting the BE list with the removal, BE and alternate list with the removal of those items. Correct. And that's really the motion. And, and then, then the next one, we will approve the cost estimate. Estimate right. and, and, and you're saying you'd come back to us. And an updated DE list. Yeah. yeah. Right. Updated DE list. Right. And, and would we update the up? Would we just be just for an item? Say just those three things, or we're or not? We would be looking at the whole I, thing. I don't think we're going to read. What? What do you think? But that may, yeah, but that may not be revised. No, I, that, that's not going to be updated or included in the next two weeks. That's, that's like a CD estimate. Okay. Correct. Right. We can, we can update that as we go along. Okay. Right. But for the next two weeks, it would be the update would be those two line items 104 and 105. Right. Because and clarifying the, the, the lockers. Right. But we're assuming that that's not an issue. I think you don't. Right. I think that makes sense. on the options list and except for the data. sense of what it is. The way I would word this is install porcelain tile in lieu of linoleum tile. Yes. Why is that What was the clarification? On number two. Yep. On that on the add adults. Right. Add porcelain tile for that's not the way I would word it to a bidder. The way I would word it is install porcelain tile in lieu of linoleum. Instead of four, I got you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, In fact, I've already drafted a alternate specification section with different language in it, uh, which was I was going to release after this meeting just for everyone's proofreading one final time. Uh, so based on tonight's discussion, I will eliminate the locker alternate from that list. In that specification section. So we have a motion to draft it up.
1456. So, 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 so. <laughs> since that's what's in the cost estimate right now, why would removing an add alternate add to the budget? Because we've taken, we have it on the DD list, right? Okay. So the, the this one, 226, yeah. we keep up 10%. Change all lockers for small or half size lockers. So I think that the theory there was either you, you reduce the number of lockers, like we just mentioned, you go to 700 lockers, and you want to allow 700 students to have lockers in the building, but, um, or you reduce the actual size to something smaller than, from total, say, 36 inch lockers to 8 inch lockers. So this is just poorly worded in there. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that. Well, so we, we, we put it on to, because there was, a, the way the language, it, it was confusing to begin with, right? And so then when we went through it, we talked about the credit. If you weren't going to take the credit for opening the lockers in half, but if the language was written, it was reduce the size of the lockers to smaller, Half again size, or or the same amount to reduce half the lockers altogether. So when we decided not to reduce half the lockers altogether, the way I interpreted the line item was it was an either or reduce them in half or reduce the number in half. And so <coughs> what really should have been was smaller quarter size. And so and I I made uh, a poor assumption that full-size lockers were at the plans, and that we still hadn't decided. We still hadn't decided. We hadn't decided what it is, but Richard TSKP and the design itself has decided for you that you can only have half-size lockers if you want 14 on and up. That's correct. We decided for the other. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, Don't do that so. again. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you in Dover, then. <laughs> so, so, to your point, though, that the alternate was just to add it, whatever was taken out in the EU could be added back as yeah. an alternate. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. so, I should, so both line items will come out. So, we'll come out of this list and it'll come out of this list. So, do we need to add a number to our motion? Well, no. it's still number six. Still it's still number six. Same, it's still same motion. So, <laughs> I mean, no, you're, you're, no, you're, 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 yeah, they're going to come up. Yeah, that doesn't change the discussion. I think it's worth it. For her. Yeah. Just the motion stage, we're going to review the copy of the dental list. Yeah. So, that, I think that will cover the removal of number six on the dental sure. right. But we also distinguish number six. I'll read it. Yeah, one we'll right up. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> conversation. Everybody good for right now? Until I read this, and then we'll make sure everybody's clear. Got the list. Everybody's following along with our numbers. So the motion would be. It's like bingo. <laughs> it's like bingo. That's exactly right. So just this isn't anything yet. I'm, I just want to make sure everybody's clear before we actually ask. Um, you got to amend the motion that's on the table Correct. first, and but I just want to make sure everybody's clear with this. So the motion would be to accept the BE list with the removal of items G104 and G105 and the alternate list as amended and with the removal of number six and to review an updated cost estimate, the E list and alternate list at the next meeting. Yes. Okay. A lot of bands. <laughs> yeah, so that one bit is what sounded like. Are you yeah. good? I think we crammed it all in there. We did. Yeah. I'm good. Okay, so we, so <laughs> if you, so I made the original motion, I think you seconded it, or if you, I don't know. I don't know. Did you do it? No. Did what? On the first motion. Well, Meg read it, and then I just moved it, and I, I can't remember if it was Chris or anything. I think, think we needed it. Yeah, we seconded it. Second. When you seconded it. Yeah. All right, so then you would read that. And well, I'm going to we have to we had first have to ask a motion to amend. Yeah. The motion to amend. Yeah. So yeah. somebody wants to ask for that to amend the motion application. I'll move to amend my original motion. Okay. I'll second it again. Okay. <laughs> any any further discussion on that? All right. All in favor? Uh, All right. Opposed? All right. So. The motion to amend is passed. So
So then I'm going, does anybody mind if I read this? Or can I it? I never, I never am on it. Go ahead. Okay, so I'm going to make a motion to accept the BE list with the removal of items B104, and G 105 and the alternate list as amended, and with the removal of number six, and to review an updated cost estimate, BE list, and alternate list at the next meeting. So moved. Second. 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 I just, I mean. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Don't take it from me, John. That's good. <laughs> so Johnny second. Any further discussion on that? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Opposed? All right, so motion carries. So we've got a path forward. That's some work to do in between. Uh, tough conversation, but good ones. So we appreciate everybody participating there. Richard gives you enough right yep. to keep moving Sorry. forward. And we then um, we'll obviously have some update documentation for the next meeting for us to kind of wrap all that up and make sure we're what we're there. Yes. Okay. And we still have still anybody in break? Or do you want to just yeah. put yeah. it in? Yeah. 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 I want to sell this. Yeah. 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 So let's go right into number three. Do we even have anybody online anymore? Uh, wait, wait. I'm going to get a step up. Oh, Scott, Scott. there's some. All right. Thank you, Scott. Just, just me. <laughs> <laughs> you got anything to add, Scott? <laughs> no, not at this time. Thank you, though. <laughs> okay. I'm going to um, ask for a motion then for us to. Uh, move to executive session to review and discuss the RFP responses for structural professional peer review services and co review services. I'll so, so second. All right, um, just for discussion, um, just to, as a reminder, this is in accordance with the Connecticut General Statute, um, I can have our section 1 206 and 1 224. Um, we will uh, adjourn the meeting to executive session by Connecticut General Statute. The attendance in executive session shall be limited to voting and non voting members of the Farmington High School Building Committee, representatives from the TSKP Studio, representatives from the Structural Solutions Group, and representatives from ONG Industries. Uh, just to note that approval of this motion shall be by two thirds vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, motion carries. We will move into executive session. We're coming out of session, that's the executive session, excuse me, 8808. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to ask for a motion to select Russell and Dawson as the finalist for structural threshold peer review services contingent upon clarification of the fee proposal. So, second. All right, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? All right, motion passes. All right, and can I have a motion to authorize the town manager and professional partnership subcommittee to negotiate and set a contract with the select finals for structural professional peer review services? So moved. Okay. Yeah. Second. Um, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. I have a motion to select for Steve as the finalist for code review services. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. 
Can I have a motion to authorize the town manager and professional partnership subcommittee to negotiate and set a contract with the selected finalists for code review services? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Can I give a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye